somebody that I can literally vent to about anything. Um, him and I have so many things in common. I think what's different about him as opposed to me is, is we were born from different people. That is literally it. That, like he is my brother. He is somebody that I legitimately look up to, I can speak to. Hopefully that's a vice versa situation. Um, it's, it's amazing though to listen to this guy speak because it's real. It's very real, it's very raw. You're, he's not gonna bullshit you. He's gonna give it to you like it is. If you don't wanna hear it, come to the next event because he's gonna do it again. So, Trey, you're up my man. What's going on, guys? So, I just wanted to uh, uh, touch base with what Alicia said earlier so you guys can actually put this in perspective. So this is my son here who is 19 months, and this is my daughter who is seven years old, okay? They're so uh, precious and cute, right? Okay, I just want you guys to realize in a couple of years, think about uh, when he's about 10, 12, Tamir Rice's age, Khalif Browder's age, he's not gonna be this old cute little black kid anymore. He's gonna be that criminal and that thug that she was talking about earlier. So I just want that to resonate in your guys' head when you guys look at these little black kids walking around. Go ahead. Take your brother over there. Now, uh, let me just, I just wanna give a quick shout out though. Mede, Muhammad, Black Perspective, the, Lady who spoke, the ch one who spoke earlier, I think her name was Alicia, Jojo, Ash, all of you guys. I want you guys to know, between you guys and my kids, you guys are the ones we're out here for. But you guys are the ones that are going to make a difference. And I just wanted to give you guys your props that you deserve. Because as young people, I wish at your guys' age, I would have got more involved like I am now. So I commend you guys 100% on what you guys are doing and the time you guys are putting out there. Everybody, everyone is out here in our group too. But really, for you guys at your ages, that you're realizing this and, and letting your voices be heard, it's awesome. It's awesome. So what I want to talk to you guys today about is uh, a little bit of this injustice with these state's attorneys and these courtrooms and these jails, the things that go on. Because I don't think you guys realize the effect that being in a jail has on your mental health. So I'm just going to put a little things in perspective for you. So I've been locked up in Newport, out here in the jail out here. And... When people say there is no racism in Vermont, it's a lie. What's going on is these racists, they are hiding in these positions like COs, state's attorneys, judges, police officers. But you guys don't see this because it's not right out in the open. It's behind closed doors in the jail where they're calling you nigger and stepping all over your beds and your mattresses, leaving their blueprints on there and not giving you a new sheet or a new pillowcase. Not letting you make your calls to your families and stuff. You guys just seen my kids. I was forced into taking plea deals for stuff that I had no, no business taking the plea deal for. Stuff that I was innocent for. But because of the scare of being away from my family and not being able to take care of my kids, I was forced into taking this just so I could take the time. I've been here since 2011. I am still trying to fight to get out of the system. And for that, I fucking hate this state. As much as that's going to hurt some of you guys, I hate this state with a passion and I want to leave. But I cannot. This system keeps me locked down every single day. And mind you, the mindset they put out is, oh, you're black. You must have came here to sell drugs to all our little white kids and all this shit. No, I came out here for college to play basketball on a scholarship. And now I'm stuck here in this system. I can't even continue my life. I am 31 years old and I can't even start a real career right now because I'm still trying to fight this system to get out. You guys don't understand. Like, There's people locked up in this jail right now that have been there a year two, three years now, and it may have been in the courtroom one time and they're still waiting to see that judge so they can prove that they're innocent. So when you hear, oh, you're innocent until proven guilty, that is not the case for many of these black kids that are getting taken to jail. And I am living proof of it right now. So when you guys ask, what can we do to help? What you can do to help is, help us get these people out, out of these positions of power. Get these people out of these state's attorney's office. Get, start raising up these kids to do the right thing and take over these jobs so that we will have the justice that we need and the equality. Because if it keeps going the way we're doing, you guys are gonna start seeing that militant attitude that you guys have been seeing all over the world, it's gonna keep spreading. So until things start to change, it's gonna get a lot worse before it gets better. So I mean, if you guys really want, don't want that happening here, I suggest you guys start talking to your friends and getting this shit taken care of because it needs to be taken care of, I promise you.